the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then we also will appear with him in glory. Open our lips, O Lord, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Welcome to St. Michael and the Angels on this Thursday in Ascension Tide as we prepare ourselves for the coming of the Holy Spirit in Pentecost. Um, we'll say some prayers together, together today, hear from Scripture, and of course hear from Julian of Norwich. I hope this will give us a guide for the day that might be ahead of all of us. Let us pray. You, O God, are rich in mercy out of the great love with which you loved us. Even when we were dead through our sins, you made us alive together with Christ. You raised us up with, raised us up in union with him and made us sit with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that you might show the immeasurable riches of your grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. By your Spirit at work within us, you do far more abundantly than all we ask or think. To you be glory in the Church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Psalm this morning is Psalm number 24. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and its inhabitants. For the Lord has founded it upon the seas and planted it firm upon the waters beneath. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord, or who may stand in God's holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not set their minds on falsehood or sworn a deceitful oath. They shall receive blessing from the Lord and recompense from God their Saviour. So it is with those who seek the Lord, with those who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, you gates, lift yourselves up, you everlasting doors that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? It is the Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord who is mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates, lift up yourselves up, you everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? It is the Lord, the Lord of hosts, who is the King of glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. reading from scripture this morning comes from the gospel of matthew chapter 9 beginning at the 35th verse then jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness when he saw the crowds he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, that's right, Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics, or sandals, or a staff, for labourers deserve their food. Whatever town of, or village you enter, find out who is in it who is worthy, and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. 
But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly I say to you, it will be, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on that day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues. And you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about what you are to speak or what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Let us continue with our readings of Julian of Norwich, uh, Revelations of Divine Love, the short text, number, uh, chapter 24. God showed me that we suffer from two kinds of sickness, of which he wishes to, us to be cured. One of them is impatience, because we find our trouble and suffering a heavy burden to bear, and the other is despair, or doubtful fear, as I shall explain later. And these two are the ones which most trouble and torment us, according to what our Lord showed me and the ones it most pleases him if we reform. I am talking of those men and women who, for the love of God, hate sin and are anxious to do God's will. And these are the two secret sins which threaten us most, so it is God's will that they should be recognised, and then we shall humbly reject them as we do other sins. And our Lord very humbly revealed to me the patience with which he bore his terrible passion and also the joy and delight which that passion gave him because of his love. And he showed by his example that we should bear our sufferings gladly and lightly, because that pleases him greatly and benefits us forever. And we are troubled by them because we do not recognise love. Though the persons of the Holy Trinity are all equal in nature, what was shown to me most clearly was that love is nearest to us all. And this is the knowledge of which we are most ignorant. For many men and women believe that God is almighty and has power to do everything, and that he is all wisdom and knows how to do everything, but that he is all love and is willing to do everything. There they stop. And this ignorance is what hinders those who most love God. For when they begin to hate sin and to mend their ways under the laws of the Holy Church, there still remains some fear which moves them to think of themselves and their previous sins. And they take this fear for humility, but it is foul ignorance and weakness. And we cannot despise it, though if we knew it, we should immediately despise it, as we do some other sin that we recognise, for it comes from the enemy, and it is contrary to truth. So, of all the properties of the Holy Trinity, it is God's wish that we should place most reliance on liking and love. For love makes God's power and wisdom very gentle to us. Just as through his generosity God forgives our sin when we repent, so he wants us to forget our sin and all our depression and all our doubtful fear. Hear what the Spirit continued to say to the church. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Blessed are the sorrowful, for they shall find consolation. Blessed are those of a gentle spirit, for they shall have the earth for their possession. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst to see right prevail, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are those who show mercy, for mercy shall be shown to them. Blessed are those whose hearts are pure, 
for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called God's children. Blessed are those who have suffered persecution for the cause of right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Holy God, you have not left us alone, but promised your abiding protection. In all we face, grant us such a knowledge of your presence and abiding care that nothing can destroy our trust. Through Jesus Christ, our liberator, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Holy and eternal God, in you we live and move and have our being. In all our cares and occupations, guide and govern us by your Spirit, that we may both remember and reveal your presence, through our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us here at St Michael of the Wages in Christchurch, New Zealand, for the service of morning prayer. Please join us again at 4pm for evening prayer, where we will pray together again, hear scripture again, and of course hear from Julian of Norwich. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord direct our hearts into God's love and Christ's perseverance. Amen. Alleluia. Amen.